Spotlight California. I'm very excited to have my guest today, Rory Kennedy, an American filmmaker, documentary filmmaker, who is focuses and centers much of her work on social issues um, such as addiction, nuclear radiation, the treatment of prisoners of war, and the politics of the Mexican border. Thrilled to have her here with us today. Welcome, Rory. Thank you, Colleen. It's great to be here. It's great to have you. Rory, you were one of the first people I reached out to to, to come on this new new show um, because I kept hearing after, you know, production was shuttered last spring and when we reopened in June, people kept telling me, you know, Rory's, Rory, right when we reopened, Rory's out there and she's filming. She's got the cameras rolling. So I want to tell me a little bit more about that, Rory. What were you shooting? What was your experience like here in California? And how did you adapt to the new need for these, you know, very comprehensive safety protocols? Yeah, well, let me say we were in touch with your office often and, and trying to kind of monitor when uh, we could get back to shooting. And you guys were very communicative and working very closely with my team, which I appreciate. Um, you know, listen, it was a challenging time for so many, and I just want to take a moment to pause um, and, and acknowledge all of the loss that we've experienced here in Los Angeles and across our nation and across the world, and what a, um, a devastating time this has been for so many. Um, so, you know, I think that that was the, you know, the hardest challenge was just understanding the implications and the, the stakes, you know, in, in starting production, because we were all very aware of, of um, what was happening and, and what the implications could be for somebody who got COVID, right? So, um, personally, I was, uh, quite well read on the the issue and um, really pursued kind of the nuance of how COVID was being transmitted, what we could do to protect ourselves. I think your office had come up with um, a number of protocols that we needed to um, abide by, which we did, and then some. I was very conservative about it um, because I, I took that responsibility very, very seriously of not wanting to expose anybody. Um, and ultimately, you know, we felt that if you operate within these protocols and you really stick to them, you can do this safely. And because we're a documentary crew, you know, it's it's never going to be no risk, but there's never and you know a situation where you've got no risk in life. So there was always some risk, but we tried to mitigate that as much as possible by following your protocols, making sure that everybody was tested way in advance, that we were tested the day of, um, that everybody wore and had N95 masks. Um, we ensured that there wasn't more than uh, two people on set at any given time, that everybody kept six feet plus apart, that we had circulation, um, that we had hand sanitizers, and we ultimately hired somebody whose only job it was on set was to enforce these policies, to test people, and to make sure that we were abiding by those protocols. Um, so ultimately, I felt being on set that we were pretty safe. I mean, the only person who didn't wear the mask was the person who I was interviewing. And they would only take it off during the interview and I would be there and I had, you know, the plastic shield on and a, a face covering as well, uh, mouth covering, nose covering. Um, and then the camera person, we would have set everything up and the sound and then be in a different location and be able to do the, the control the camera remotely. So, you know, ultimately there was, it, it felt pretty darn safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, well choreographed and the, the collective spirit of so many who came together to, to draft these, these safety protocols and procedures that really serve to provide the safest possible environment for production. I mean, it really is a special moment for the entertainment production industry. And can you tell me um, a little bit, tell me about the project um, that you were working on? 
Uh, well, this project is a documentary. It's a feature documentary with Netflix about Boeing and the 737 MAX crashes. So um, it was largely, you know, interview based and archival. So we didn't do a lot of verite filmmaking where we were kind of following characters as they um, were, were, you know, their lives were unfolding, that it was more controlled and contained. And part of that um, creative decision was based on, you know, how do we film this in these conditions and make, and still make a great film. Um, I also did, you know, here in Los Angeles with your protocols and whatnot, I was able to film on set, but I also for over the course of this film did a lot of remote interviews um, because mostly because I was concerned about me traveling and then going on set and exposing people because I, I had been traveling. Um, and so we would hire local crews in you know, Seattle and Washington and other places where we were filming. And I would do the interviews much like I'm doing this discussion with you or you're interviewing me um, over a computer. Um, and you know, there would be a, a human cameraman and a human sound person and a kind of a, a field producer on set. Um, but it enabled me to do a number of interviews and still capture the footage I needed without having to travel. Well, it sounds like you were able to adapt adapt quickly to this new set of circumstances that were, were presented. You know, you, you and I both are strong believers that film has the ability to impact social change. I mean, you have dedicated your professional career to this. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? And in terms of um, disseminating your work and, and cutting through the noise and getting your, your project seen, um, tell me what that's like for you right now. Well, you know, I, I do think that there's um, such power in storytelling. I, I do think that um, particularly over the last, you know, five, four or five years, um, not as much now, but uh, you know where there were there, where we've seen such a, a huge divide in this country in particular and and around the world um, that you know storytelling and and focusing on individuals and their experiences I think can be a great way to help people feel connected and to have a sense of understanding and empathy of what somebody else is going through, somebody who you might not meet or know, um, or an idea that is new to you. Um, so I think it has this kind of transcendent quality or potential to it that um, helps to bridge, you know, these these pretty um, seemingly intractable divides um, that have have really defined our country. Um, for so long now. So I, I do think there's, there is great power in, in the act of storytelling. There is, ab absolutely there is. So talk, you've shot projects in other jurisdictions other in here in uh, the US and, and, and abroad, but what, what is your experience like filming in California and being close, close to home? And, and why do you like to film here in California? Right. Well, I love California and it is my home. Um, and, you know, uh, geographically, it's easier than, than flying across the country or, or to another country. Um, but, you know, listen, California is such a special state. And I think it has, you know, there's so many different uh, pockets of California and people and their stories. Um, over the years, I've, I've filmed here um, for a range of different documentaries from, you know, the fence, which I did, which was about the, the border fence. It was, you know, this was 10 or 12 years ago before anybody was talking about the wall. It was called the fence. Um, so I made a short documentary about that which premiered at the Sundance Film Festival. And I, I filmed here uh, in California 
San Diego, Tijuana. Um, and over the years, I, I felt, did a film called Ghost of Abu Ghraib, where we filmed experts and, and lawyers who lived in San Francisco. Um, you know, I've traveled throughout this state from, from the very northern tips to the southern to the you know, from the, the coast inland. And I just love everything that it has to offer both visually and then, you know, the quality of people here and the education system that has kind of led to people who have a great level of expertise and, you know, have become leaders across our nation who I've leaned on to help us tell stories. Um, so, you know, yeah, and, and then, it's wonderful to make films here because of the quality of the filmmaking teams, right? I mean, you can't go to many other places in the country. Maybe New York is competitive, but where you can find fantastic camera people and editors and people who can do wonderful work in the online and the mix and um, animation and, uh, you know, and then associate producers and young people who are, who are coming up in the industry. Um, and, uh, so I've just, I've, I've loved making films here over the years and, and excited to continue to do so. Good. Well, we're, we're excited to have you continue to, to stay here in California and, and film here. Thank you so much, Rory. At the end of our interview, I, I like to do a little bit of a lightning round. There's no right or wrong answer to these questions. <laughs> so it's just a, a, a quick kind of casual lightning round for you. And thank you so much for that, that interesting discussion. So question to you, so guilty pleasure during the pandemic. Um, surfing. Favorite California filming location. My home. Favorite way to spend a Saturday night with my children and my husband and our dogs and goats and turtles and chickens. One word to describe California. Perfection. Sunrise or sunset? Mm, sunrise. Coffee or tea? Tea. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Do you have a favorite classic movie? A favorite classic movie? Um, I have too many. I can't, I can't answer that. Profession other than your own that you would like to attempt? Uh, law. Yes, I can imagine. It's in the family, the law. <laughs> it continues to call you still, Rory. But in the meantime, keep making these amazing, incredible films that have such a strong impact. Um, thank you so much for being here with me on Spotlight California. Thanks, Rory. Thanks, Colleen. Great talking to you. Good talking to you too. Great talking to you. Bye-bye. All right, see you later.